Hey everybody, welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the expense of the technologically disadvantaged. I've been corrected about that, so I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got some stories for you. I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. Over the next couple weeks, I'm hoping to make some changes for the better. Uh, <laughs> not sure if the video is going to get any better or not. Addicts are addicts, you know. Might tweak the lighting a little bit. Sound isn't doing too awful bad, and I'm working on getting my alignment fixed. I know the, the dubbing's been a little off in a couple instances. Um, totally my fault. I have no excuse except that sometimes I'm an idiot. Technologically disadvantaged. So anyway, we're planning on doing more videos for you guys uh, through the week here on Uncle Reddit. And we're also going to be kicking them over to a podcast soon. So you'll have both formats. For those of you that can't watch, you know, you're driving, something like that. We're going to do a podcast format as well. And uh, once we get that rolling, we'll start popping the links over to you guys so that whichever format you prefer, that's the one you can roll with. All right, guys, let's get to the stories. Do you know what's a bad idea? White wallpapers. The cast is me, IT manager, marketing manager, and design firm working in a two-man IT department for a $7 billion company. <laughs> Marketing manager outsourced all the heavy lifting to a design firm. They didn't really do much but take credit. IT manager believed in insourcing, and that's what we in IT did. They just didn't get along due to philosophical differences. Marketing told me what they needed to ask design firm to make a wallpaper. I advised resolution, file format, etc. It was made clear to me by IT manager my role is to do as little as possible. I had bigger fish to fry than a wallpaper. So marketing sent me the image. I told them to put it in a JIRA job, and I'd deploy it next time I did server patching on a weekend, as I could force restart workstations on a weekend. I was told all devices must have the wallpaper at the same time for consistency. The fateful weekend came around, I opened my JIRA queue, and got to work. I deployed the wallpaper knowing it would take a bit of time to get deployed all around the workstations. After it was deployed, I realized the wallpaper was predominantly white. <laughs> and do you know what else is white on a desktop? All the text on desktop icons. Blankety blank blank blank. That's not really what OP said, but I can't put it here. Called marketing manager. No surprise, she didn't answer. Once again, heavy lifting outsourced. Called IT manager. Explained what happened. So you deployed the wallpaper that marketing manager said must be done at the same time. You called marketing manager and she didn't answer. Not much else you can do. Just email me and Big Boss to cover your butt and we'll direct all tickets to marketing on Monday. I could hear the glee in his voice. On Monday, marketing got a lot of tickets. Someone definitely wasn't thinking that one through. I, I've run into that problem at schools and houses, my own wife and kids. Everybody wants either, you know, something really stark that matches your font or they want to do something that's so busy that you can't possibly find an icon or a font on the screen at all. You guys ever run into this problem? Let me know in the comments down below. I reverse carded a lawyer. I've just hit 10 years in the industry and I was reminded of something that happened to me about a year into my first tech support job. I was working for a level one help desk for lawyers and had been assigned a law firm that had a lawyer who was frequently difficult. He had very little patience for us and whenever he called us, he expected unrealistic things from us and had zero respect for our jobs. The second thing to note about this job is that it was in our contracts that we were allowed to record phone calls for training and defense purposes. I don't think I ever heard that in the recordings like that. You say training and quality purposes. I'd rather hear it this way. Training in our defense. Anyway. Finally, the lawyer sweared a lot, but I'll be replacing the SH swears with SHIP. Our players, me equals me, myself, and I. DL equals disrespectful lawyer. M equals manager. Me, thank you for calling help desk. How may I assist? Disrespectful lawyer. This is complete bullshit. I hit the record button. Me, I'm sorry to hear you're experiencing trouble, sir. Can you give me more information on what's wrong? DL. This is complete ship. Me. Again, I'm very sorry to hear that, sir. Is it your computer? DL. This is complete bullshit. 
<laughs> me. Yes, sir. Could I connect on? It took me about two minutes, but I convinced him that I could connect on. Nothing seems wrong. Me. Sir, I'm not seeing anything on your computer screen. Are you seeing anything wrong on your end? DL. This is complete ship. You're completely useless. I want someone local to come by. No one on your team ever does their job right. Why can't you just fix it? Me. I'm very sorry to hear that, sir. If you can just give me some more information on what specifically is wrong, I'd be happy to send someone over as soon as possible. Manager stands up. Do you need help? DL. This is complete bullshit. Why can't you just fix it? Me. I'm very sorry, sir. I just need for you to tell me what is specifically wrong. At this point, DL hangs up on me. Manager. What the heck was that? Me. While simultaneously trying to write up the vaguest ticket in history. DL called and refused to tell me what was wrong. I tried connecting on, but couldn't see anything wrong. All he would do is repeatedly swear at me and rant about how useless I was. Manager sighs. But I recorded the whole call. Manager perks up. Manager, send that to me. Send the ticket up high priority. By the time I start calling through the high priority tree to get someone to help DL, the head of IT for the law firm is called Manager. I didn't hear the conversation, but Manager informed me that DL had reported to the head of IT that I had been rude and unhelpful during DL's phone call. DL was, for whatever reason, clearly trying to get me fired. Manager simply said that he had the recording to the phone call and emailed it off to the head of IT. DL was banned from calling the help desk for nearly a year, and I got a personal apology from the head of IT for how DL treated me. <laughs> yeah, I'm a firm believer in respect. I don't care how bad somebody ticks me off or their company ticks me off. I'm not going to just jump the butt of the first guy or lady on the phone that's trying to help me. Even if they are reading a canned script, you know, that can be a little aggravating, but hey, they got company policies, I get it. There's no point in abusing people. I can show my frustration and even anger to a certain extent without abusing the person on the other end of the line who really didn't cause my problem. People just need to chill. The Plastic Sword We got this printer about three years ago. Then I moved to a different city and my uncle took it, only to print merely 200 pages and to give it back in non-working condition. They said they got it checked and the person was charging them way too much for it to be worth it. They said it was better to just buy a new printer. And so this printer was just laying in my closet collecting dust for two years. I came back home a few days back to spend some time with the family. I took this printer out today because I wanted to scan some old photos. And I was like, eh, what the heck, I'll check it once again. I started digging through stuff online and I could only find out that the error code meant there was some mechanical issue. Then I started tinkering. First I reinstalled the toner. No luck. Then I picked up a screwdriver and unscrewed the first few shiny looking screws on the printer. They were holding a metal tray at the bottom. This plastic sword came out of the bottom metal tray. The printer's working now. So much for the repair being not worth it. P.S. I'm not an IT expert. I'm a software engineer. I help out family and friends and I just find this stuff very interesting. Me too, OP. I'm a tinkerer at heart. I remember when I was 14 and I took my dad's pickup truck apart. No, really. I took the heads off, or the intake, the heads, the exhaust manifolds. Uh, it wasn't running when I started, and it darn sure wasn't running when I got finished. But I did learn a lot, and eventually I learned how to take things apart and put them back together. A psychic Dell tech? I fix computers, as I'm certain the grand majority of us here do, and on occasion, it is necessary for us to have to talk to the manufacturers. Background. I have a laptop I'm working on. Busted screen. It's backlit, but shows no info. I popped it open, made sure the cable on the motherboard was seated correctly, and determined it's probably the screen. Me equals me. DS equals Psychic Dell Tech Supervisor. I think I'm just going to call him Psychic Tech. What follows is an extremely abridged version of the conversation. Me. What's up? DS. Yo! Yes, he did greet me this way, and I was living for it. DS. How can I help you today? Me. Pretty simple. I have a laptop in warranty with a bad screen. Just need you to send me a new one. DS. Cool. Give me a sec to find the troubleshooting questions. Me. All good. You new? 
Yes. No, I'm a supervisor. Pretty much everyone called out because we have freezing rain, so here I am filling in. Me. All good, dude. Take your time. We go over all the, are you an IT guy capable of basic troubleshooting questions? DS. Alright. Sounds like you know what you're talking about. I'll get your order in immediately. Flash forward to today. I have received the box. I have scheduled time with the user to get her laptop back and do the install. I get her laptop, I open that puppy up, and then... Upon opening the box I find the screen bezel and a new screen cable, but no screen to be seen. Gosh darn, I trusted you psychic tech. So I decided, eh screw it, and installed the screen with the new bezel and screen cable. Started dialing the customer as I angrily finished closing up the laptop and hit the power button out of habit. When the laptop powers on, problem free. I open and close the laptop several times to verify, but gosh darn, it totally works. I guess, thank you, confused Dell supervisor. You didn't give me what I asked for, but you gave me what I needed. Too long didn't read. Supervisor filling in tech chat at Dell sends me the right, wrong thing. Well, you know what they say, you can't always get what you want, but sometimes you get what you need. Too corny? Which report shows why we're missing so many cases of liquor? This was a local customer who, thanks to investors, had more money than brains and hired all his friends to manage some shops in a small, high-end community. Every month, one of the bars is showing thousands of dollars in losses of liquor, and they just can't seem to figure it out. Since they're using our software for inventory management, they want us to tell them where all that liquor is going. Unfortunately, all we can do is show them receipts, sales adjustments, and physical inventory. The losses all become evident at each physical inventory, so to me the obvious answer is that the liquor is walking out that door in large quantities, and nobody's paying for it. The money guy scoffs at me and insists that there must be a software bug, because there's no way that much inventory gets stolen without him seeing it. He believes that the liquor is being sold but just not recorded, which of course in my mind should leave you with massive overages in your cash drawer, but sales from the POS very closely match the inventory numbers. So I agree to come out on a busy night and observe things to see if I can figure it out. What I observe is money guy at the bar getting drunk and flirting with the really hot bar manager. He stays in a stupor for the entire evening and can't possibly be keeping an eye on things. I ask some of the other employees if they've seen anything going on that might account for large quantities of missing liquor. One girl tells me that the manager's son often comes in and takes a case or two out the back. This is apparently common knowledge to the employees, and their understanding is that the manager's son is simply using the bar to get liquor at cost. The next afternoon, I call Money Guy and explain what I was told. He speaks to the manager, who naturally assures him this isn't happening. I give him the name of the person I spoke with, and when he speaks with her, she confirms and gives the names of several other employees who also confirm it. The police are called, and when this is all over, both the manager and her son are arrested. The son managed a small bar and was selling the stolen liquor to his bar. We earned a lot of trust because of this, and the money guy realized that getting drunk every night was probably making the liquor theft easier. Yeah, I'm not sure how he figured it would be a really good idea to get drunk and flirt and not pay any attention to the business. He'd have been better off just going home. And since we're on the topic of booze, the numbers are off, but we've been drinking. This honest revelation came from one of our customers who got an early start to a New Year's Eve celebration. They were trying to run the last payroll of the year and noticed that things weren't right and needed to call for help. Thankfully, their payroll guy recognized that he was drunk and confessed to us that they had started drinking at about noon and were now too drunk to find the problem. Rather than completely mess things up, they all decided they better stop and call us. Having pity on them, it was turned over to one of our accounting whizzes and she found that it was a simple matter of missing one of the steps. The payroll guy was able to successfully run payroll. Says this is his last official duty of the year and is about to hit the hard stuff, and thanks us for saving his butt. About a week later, we get a delivery of a basket with wine, cheese, sausages, etc. Along with a letter from this company thanking us for helping them, even though it was their own fault for being drunk. Pretty cool. Alright guys. Thanks for joining me again for r slash Tales from Tech Support. Remember, any comments, questions, suggestions you have, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. And hey, if you made it this far, you might as well click that thumbs up, right? And click subscribe, and hey, 
you're on a roll, go ahead and click the little bell icon so you don't miss the fat guy with the beard telling you stories. Also, hey, why don't you hit one of these videos right here? I think they're pretty good too.